Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazarov's chess channel and welcome to our Gary Kasparov saga. So in this series we're following Gary Kasparov's life and his chess career from the year 1981 till 2000 and we'll continue now our series with the 1983 candidates tournament and we're back in the quarterfinal stage in which um, Gary Kasparov faced another uh, great grandmaster Alexander Rylavsky. So in our previous game uh, that we have analyzed from the quarterfinals we saw a winning game played by Belyavsky against Gary Kasparov. It was really great great performance performance that uh, Belyavsky has played against uh, the Beast from Baku and today again a great game this quarterfinal between Kasparov Belyavsky was such a great performance by both of these players with great attacking brilliances with great uh, theoretical uh, novelties also with improvements of positions with really this common and natural opening lines that I think we faced many times like the Queen's Gambit declined uh, the Rui Lopez games and here, Gary Kasparov will provide, I think, interesting ideas of the Queen's Gambit declined exchange variation. Uh, and I really like to follow now this uh, Gary Kasparov saga as I played, I play most of the times also the exchange variation. If my opponents, for instance, responds with the Queen's Gambit declined, maybe the Slav defense or with the co uh, common Queen's Gambit decline with the move e6. I really like the exchange variation, the simplified idea, and then. Uh, activating the pieces so i think it's it's really again a great game played by uh, both sides and also a very instructive game for, for those who wants to maybe improve in the queen's game decline so let's check out now the game here gary played with the white piece at and opened with the move d4 beliavsky responded with d5 c4 e6 uh, the queen's gambit decline knight to c3 and now knight to f6 so this is the normal line here gary kasparov plays c takes d5 and it's really a tricky idea you may think there's nothing special here going on, but really, after the move uh, e takes d5, the position now in the center is static. And um, what Gary Kasparov um, uh, will do and can do, of course, is a normal healthy development. That's, I think, why I like uh, the this Queen's Gambit decline, but then from White's perspective, the exchange variation. First of all, we should evaluate now this pawn structure in the center it means the pawn structure is static what i mean about that that the moves the pawns cannot move even if you play something from black perspective for instance like let's imagine it will not be played in the game but if you try to really force a potential c5 move or from white perspective a potential e4 move then you risk always uh this position where you can have an isolated pawn so that's why we call this position really a static position so it's not so easy uh, to make progress in this uh, types of position and i think black face many uh, uh, from black perspective black uh, when black plays this position face many problems because white has really a natural development here bishop to g5 we are developing our piece on the best active square bishop to e7 we don't want to have of course the spinning idea now e3 simply as i said if c5 happens we'll simply play d takes c5 and black is continuing the game with the weak isolated pawn so here uh, h6 we have bishop to h4 and now castling bishop to d3 even if you try for instance to take out uh, here um if you don't castle if you try bishop to f5 to prevent for instance this bishop to d3 idea or queen to c2 then again black has some troubles you see it's not so easy for black to develop here in a natural way bishop to f6 will happen uh bishop takes f6 and now queen to b3 we have a double attack on two weaknesses so i think from this point on black is losing so that's why uh here castling <coughs> played by Belyavsky simply securing the king and now we can play bishop to d3 so see all of the pieces now in the queen's gambit decline this exchange variation are on natural piece uh, on natural squares that's why i like this setup in the game uh, b6 was played here Belyavsky is announcing that he is developing his bishop on this diagonal not on this diagonal where he could maybe after potential knight to f3 play a pitting idea so now uh, after b6 Kasparov plays the natural knight to f3 so you see both knights on very active squares knight to c3 knight to f3 very natural setup bishop is on also on a very active square uh, bishop on d3 and also this bishop on h4 perfectly fine so far so uh, here bishop to b7 played by uh, Belyavsky we have castling and now c5 now comes this idea now d takes c5 is not such a problem because we can recapture with the uh, pawn we don't have to risk this isolated pawn if d takes c5 let's b takes c5 then black is continuing the game with this hanging pawn sort of uh this is now the hanging pawn pawn structure and still 
uh, black has some opportunities here but white i think can always challenge this uh, uh this hanging pawns but as i said i think black uh, pardon me white shouldn't take the pawn here in the game Garika Sparov played the move knight g5. Whenever you face this static center setups, it means that we should try to search an advantage by outpost. So we should, from white perspective, occupy somehow maybe this e5 square. From black's perspective, uh, black should always occupy the e weak e4 square. So that's where we're ser uh, searching for dynamics there. Uh, with that kind of moves, we can create new dynamics in the game, new uh, maybe... Uh, asymmetrical pawn structures which could, which could create again a uh, new pressure uh, for opponents so here after the move c5 as i said knight to e5 we have knight to d7 and now very interesting idea by kasparov bishop to f5 here we are challenging already uh this uh, this knight on d7 uh in the game uh, knight takes e5 was played there is also this move queen to f3 is also very interesting uh after potential knight takes e5 d takes e5 you see again the d5 pawn is a little bit weak but in the game bishop to f5 uh, played by kasparov we have knight takes e5 and now d takes e5 and the problem is now for black black would love to play the move uh knight to d7 but so far it's not possible because we'll simply play bishop to g3 and if you try for instance to challenge the bishop then you face really some dangerous tactics with potential e6 moves so black would have to regroup somehow with knight to b8 knight to c6 in order to get some kind of an activity you see if you place your queen on c7 in order to support the attack on e5 then e6 is always a threat so this pawn on e5 plays a very important space advantage uh it's really although it's a double pawn but now we have a huge five uh five versus three majority on the king side so that's what i talked about we have created new dynamics new asymmetrical pawn structures new uh, opportunities to attack somehow uh in the game after the move uh, d takes e5 here uh knight takes knight to e8 was played so not this knight to d7 idea but a similar setup here by kasparov he plays again the move bishop to g3 and here knight to c7 uh played by beliaski very very uh, risky choice maybe here a better idea is to push it here simply with the move g6 after bishop to c2 now maybe knight to c7 and try finally to grab uh this e6 square really cementing the position around this e6 in the game he played knight to uh knight to c7 immediately and this gives now uh gary kasparov the opportunity to play queen to g4 uh, the idea is again is, uh, preventing idea we are not allowing this knight to jump on e6 then we'll simply take so in the game queen to e8 was played if you try something like bishop to c8 it leads now really into great great tactical battle if you try for instance to compete uh with the bishop and the queen on, on light squares then you get e6 that's uh the preparation here by gary kasparov uh after knight takes e6 rook to d1 that's the threat we're simply placing our rook on this very active d file you see this knight is attacking that you could maybe try d4 after knight to b5 again also there are uh, some targets here this is weak c7 pawn so as i said it's not so easy here for black i think to defend with such a great activity of white pieces so that's why after the move queen to g4 here beliavsky gets the queen on e8 but now uh gary sneaks in with the bishop bishop to d7 and it's already a uh, really really weird position here for the queen the queen has to lose another tempo queen to d8 and now rook from a to d1 again a similar idea as we always like to say the rook has to be played on the same file where the queen is now the queen so far it's not endangered but indirectly it could be endangered if something uh, opens here if the d file opens for instance then the queen could be really endangered so h5 played by beliaski trying really to deflect the queen from the defense of the bishop but Garik, of course stays with the uh, queen on this diagonal we have uh, h4 again if you take that's not a good choice bishop to h4 uh, queen to h4 queen to d7 so that's why bishop to f4 and now bishop to g5 if you try g5 to trap the bishop then it's immediately losing i think here for for black because queen to g4 would happen and now if you try for instance to challenge again the bishop we have knight takes d5 that was a great great tactical shot that i think that gary kasparov has prepared here because if you try bishop to d7 then first knight takes e7 queen to e7 and now rook to d7 that's 
the main issue here that's uh, why this rook to d1 was such a, such an important move you see the knight is hanging we have still the opportunity to stay take this pawn it's simply losing here for black so after the move bishop to g5 here gary kasparov plays bishop to f5 staying with his bishop on this very active diagonal in the game g6 was played and now comes really gary kasparov move you can maybe try to see really the best continuation test your might as we always like to say uh here after the move g6 there is really a great move uh, and this comes always with with this psychology in, th in chess i think when we get attacked most of us i think would simply retreat and uh, oh no we get attacked what should we do uh, our bishop is hanging but not gary kasparov i think that's the main strength of gary kasparov when he gets attacked he searches immediately for opportunities to counter attack the counter attack it's really a great element of the chess game after the move g6 here gary kasparov found knight to e4 simply attacking the bishop if you for instance try uh, here uh, h uh, g takes um, f5 then we simply take knight takes g5 you see your h4 pawn is hanging and there are also some checkmate threats on h7 we can take this pawn so simply losing game here for for black so but in the game Belyavsky tried of course first bishop takes f4 after e takes f4 now g takes f5 uh, maybe also an idea is to get out of the range of the rook queen to e7 is a possibility but then knight to f6 is also a very dangerous knight to f6 followed with queen to h4 so in the game uh, Belyavsky took uh, g takes uh, f5 but now queen to f5 and there are now really this dangerous threats as i said knight to f6 uh, followed with queen to h7 even if you try here maybe knight to e8 in order to prevent this idea in order maybe to uh, to uh, cover this f6 square then you get knight to g5 and again a similar position will happen uh, queen to h7 and it's game over so that's why after the move queen to f5 here uh, Belyavsky sacrificed the queen what he hoped for is to get a rook and two minor pieces of course for the queen so that's why here Gary Kasparov first played the check queen to g4 king to h7 and now rook takes d8 rook takes d8 and now queen to h4 okay let's stop a little bit and evaluate the position this could be playable for black if white wouldn't have one one uh one element here these are two connected pawns and they can always uh, be traded for at least one of these pawns they can, can really create further dynamics as i said in the beginning white after the uh, move d takes e5 in the beginning that we said uh, white has always this five versus three situation now it's two versus one but our main goal is to push here f5 f6 queen to uh, g5 and then queen to g7 a checkmate so this is now our setup that we're searching so after the move uh, uh, queen to h4 king to g8 was played and now queen to uh, queen to e7 in the game e3 uh, played by Belyavsky simply trying to split pawns to uh, after potential f takes e3 you see rook to d2 is the threat and maybe here also some uh, some dangerous threat on g2 but here uh, Gary Kasparov simply plays rook to e1 we have um, uh, e takes f f2 king to f2 rook to d2 and now rook to e2 so far everything is protected uh, rook takes e2 king to e2 and now bishop to a6 here Belyavsky probably hoped that he can defend this because uh, Kasparov has of course the square f2 it's not a problem that Gary Kasparov's king is endangered but if uh, black regroups here a little bit if black gets some kind of a defensive setup then it could be a problem for white but here after the move king to f2 and knight to e6 again it seems so that uh, Belyavsky has protected everything but now of course comes f5 that's the main strength of these two connected pawns now they're simply rolling with the uh, with the uh, support of the queen the king is really really endangered here so knight to d4 we have uh, e6 you cannot take of course first we'll simply uh, take queen to f7 so that's why rook to f8 protecting everything but now queen to g5 first the check king to h7 and now e7 you see the pawns are marching all over the board e7 the rook has to retreat if it tries rook to g8 then we'll simply take rook takes g8 and the promotion to e8 so that's why this rook is stuck simply to the defense of the potential promotion rook to e8 and now f6 great move again by uh, kasparov uh preparing here this checkmate so that's why knight to e6 a necessary move and now queen to h5 king to g8 any disposition belyavsky resigned so 
The tactical threat is a simple one. Uh, we could try queen to g4 after king to h7. The easiest way to win this game, uh, I think, is to simply play uh, queen to e6. Uh, that's also a great uh, sacrifice. After uh, f takes e6, we simply can uh, push this pawn further. So we'll have a new queen. But uh, the most effective way, I think, uh, here in this position is queen to f5. After king to g8, then queen to g4. And you see now queen to a4. That's the main problem uh, because black will lose another piece the bishop is hanging and also the rook on e8 and it was game over so great great attack by Gary Kasparov he got his revenge because we saw in the in our previous analyzed game uh, that Pelyavsky really outplayed him with a great great uh, with a great pawn breakthrough motive so this was I think got his revenge he played for you he really an outstanding game i think with great attacking formations with this idea to get a pawn majority five versus three uh get these pawns rolling really creating new dynamics because of this outposted knight on e5 great great attack again by the beast from baku so i think i really really enjoyed this game so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game like i did uh, if you want to see more gary kasparov's games here's the link and uh, if you want to see the best chess games in history check out my best chess games of all time series and if you like this content you can also subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course